So for whatever reason you want to buy the iPad Air 6 even though it's going to be one of the most boring updates in the world, I have great news for you because this apparently could be the only iPad we get this year. So let's delve into it. Credible Apple source Minshiko recently told us there was a chance Apple releases no new iPads in 2023. Now this would be very alarming news because fun fact, Apple's been releasing a new iPad every single year since its conception back in 2010. That's 13 consecutive years of some sort of new iPads. And so Apple breaking this cycle would be major news, but I can't blame Timothy for considering this because consumers, especially right now, are not going to be rushing out to stores to buy new iPads with a slightly better chip inside. And by the way, would like to remind you guys, like this video and subscribe for more content like this. It would be appreciated. However, as per the norm in the world of leaks, we have a new source that contradicts what Quo tells us, and we have a Weibo source telling us that no, we are seeing a new iPad this year, and it's not going to be a new version of the base iPad or the beloved iPad Mini, but a new iPad Air, because clearly we need a new version of that. Anyways, to back this up, German also chimes in and vaguely says, yes, it's in the works, so I guess it's happening, guys. No one tells us when to expect this iPad, but I think it's pretty easy to predict this. It will likely be in October because that's what they did last year. They gave us the new iPad 10 and the M2 iPad Pro via press releases, and so expect the same sort of thing this year for the iPad Air 6. Now, what kind of upgrades can we expect? Well, it's going to be your usual spec updates. All they're doing really is chucking the M2 motherboard from the iPad Pro into the S chassis. Give it a new color that's going to get the Apple sheep way too excited, including me. And boom, you have your iPad refresh. It's that simple, guys, especially since we've heard lots about Apple having a surplus of M2 SoCs. I'm sure they want to chuck this into as many products as possible, so yes, Logistically speaking, I can see why Apple's releasing this. But please guys, whatever you do, do not buy this iPad. Now yes, it's your money at the end of the day, I'm just a crazy guy on the internet, but there really is nothing with iPadOS that's going to utilize the additional performance of M2. Heck, it's not even utilizing M1 right now. And yes, I know someone's gonna mention in the comments, what about support, bro? M2's newer, so obviously that's gonna get longer support. And yeah, that is a valid point. I can't argue against that. But also, let's be honest, M1's not losing support anytime soon. Apple's still supporting A10 iPads, so I would literally advise everyone to buy the M1 iPad Air for less instead. Unless you're a spec nerd who wants to hire Geekbench score to flex on your one friend, then sure, buy it if you want. But realistically, M1's gonna be more than fine for iPadOS for the foreseeable future. But surely there must be something else, right? Uh, honestly, I doubt it. We could see Wi-Fi 6C, which I guess is cool, but really, that alone's not a must-have feature for the iPad Air's demographic. And that's literally all I can think of. Maybe we could see that new hover feature M2 iPad Pro has, but considering there's already so little different between the Air and the Pro, I would not be surprised if that remains as a Pro exclusive. And so when I say the M2 Air is a spec upgrade, I really mean it, guys. This in many ways is similar to the Max we saw in Jan because those were also simple spec refreshes and nothing else. And so literally, the only good thing about this refresh is that it should bring down the price of the M1 Air, which is fantastic news for bargain hunters like myself because we could soon see the iPad Air for $400 or less, which is an incredible deal. But of course, you may be wondering, what kind of changes can Apple give us to make the iPad Air a meaningful update? Well, a camera-related change that would be nice is the landscape camera the base iPad has. Now, yes, I know the reason the other iPads don't have this is because the Apple Pencil 2 charging strip is right in the same spot as the base iPad's landscape camera that, of course, still supports Apple Pencil 1. But it's still a little weird. The cheapest iPad is technically better in this aspect compared to more expensive iPads. And so, Apple, here's an idea from a guy who sits in a room and rambles to a camera. Why don't you just move the strip to the side a little? I know, I know, I'm a genius, what's a revolutionary idea that definitely hasn't already been thought of by someone who works at Apple, but anyways, 
Hopefully they do implement this, and that's really the only camera change I care about. Don't give us some sort of megapixel increase on the back camera because no one should be using the rear cameras for taking photos on a bloody iPad. Another simple change that would make a big difference is 128 gigs of base storage. It's actually pretty stupid. The iPad Air has the power of the M1 that can run software like Final Cut, and yet you're stuck with only 64 gigs of storage. Even 128 gigs is not ideal to be frank for those who want to edit 4K footage on this, but at least you can make it work, and it would be a nice Goldilocks option in the range. And frankly guys, it's crazy to me the new Apple Watches have the same amount of storage as a bloody iPad. So I'm hoping Timothy is gracious enough to give us double the storage on the iPad Air 6. Another thing I would love to see are thinner bezels and OLEDs. Now the first thing might seem like a simple enough upgrade, but you just know that Timothy loves to recycle the same design again, and again, and again, and so if it's gonna cost Apple slightly more to make those bezels thinner, they're not gonna spend that cash. They're just gonna keep reusing the same design. If anything, Apple's willing to spend cash to make the products worse, because yes, remember the iPad Air 6 has a 10.9 inch panel, which is slightly smaller than the iPad Pro. Now, of course, it would have been cheaper to give the Air the exact same 11 inch panel, but no, Apple wanted that specific spec on paper to be worse, and so they intentionally spent the money to make the bezels slightly thick on the device. The same goes for the base iPads. It would have been cheaper to give this Apple Pencil 2 and a laminated panel because it's based on the iPad Air design, but no, let's spend money and redesign the product to make it worse and give it a display that was not laminated and also engineer a bloody new dongle to make Apple Pencil 1 work with this iPad. They sure are thinking differently over there, Cupertino. Now regarding OLED, I think it's pretty simple as to why we're not getting this and that's the fact the 11 inch iPad Pro is still using LCD. Now yes, there were reports a long while back the iPad Air could get OLED, but those ended up being wrong and we seem pretty sure now the iPad Pro is only getting this. Also remember large OLED panels are pretty expensive and so Apple's definitely not going to bring that to a non-pro iPad just yet and so expect LCD and 60Hz to stay with the iPad Air 6. And actually, I was thinking to myself, basically everything we want with the iPad Air is already here with the iPad Pro because if you want 120Hz, the iPad Pro has that. Quad speakers, the iPad Pro has that. Face ID, the iPad Pro has that. And so yes, frankly, there are too many options in the iPad range. It's an absolute mess trying to recommend an iPad to buy right now. So they should either upgrade the Air and drop the 11 inch or kill the Air and keep the 11 inch as is. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. And thank you for watching.